today we're going to focus on the nightmare wiring. We've got to sort out the power as well because the power doesn't have ground on it currently. The existing cable has a earth pin but there's no actual earth lead so we need to secure that. We need to add a fuse and do a few other things to the cabling in there as well. So let's just get started straight into looking at the wiring as it is. Now it's all nice and clean and go from there. So now the cab's all cleaned up, I'm now having a look at this wiring and here's what I've sort of worked out here guys, there's some extra cabling that was in here, the bottom of the cab and um, I believe these are like a, a JVS, sort of like a Jammer 2 wiring harness, um, I don't think they're used for like Naomi and, and some of the later, uh, the later games and systems. Now for our use we really just need to use Jammer um, because I'm going to use a uh, Raspberry Jammer and really all I need to do is hook that into the Jammer interface uh, and from there I just need uh, the controls 5 volts and 12 volts uh, obviously earth and the audio, I'm probably going to not use the Jammer audio. I'm probably going to go straight out of the uh, Raspberry Jammer and go straight to a 2.1 stereo system, a Logitech or something like that. Uh, because I really want that really nice deep bass uh, for the shmups. I've really got still extra cabling in here. And if I look at this harness, I can see it's got the... I've worked this out. I believe this is the kick harness. So this would be for the extra buttons and if we follow snake that back up to the top uh, once i get all this undone i'm suspecting that that one will end up going to the kick harness here so we've got player uh, let's look under here we've got that's for the sp uh, the speaker wiring so we won't actually need that and then we've got player one controls player two controls and i only need three buttons per side for all the shmups and uh, the raspberry jammer supports that out of the box so so that'll do me fine there and then i won't need this that would be the extra extra buttons for the kick harness and i'll also just roll that up and, and have that sitting in the in the cabinet here and we just got an earth on the end so i'm going to undo all of this this is the plan i'm going to undo this and follow these cables back so that I just get the controls that I need and then I'll be able to take that um, kick harness out of here because we won't need that and then I've got to figure out what's actually been cut along here and goes off to this rather uh, dodgy looking selection of cables here which again I think just goes off to like a I don't know a Capcom IO board or something like that to I guess to support the JVS standard. I know that the monitor cabling which is over here uh, this here was completely dis disconnected that goes up to the monitor and then we should have our red green blue and sync cable so and with the transformer I've just got to make sure that, that transformer is 240 volt um, step down to the 90 odd or whatever is required for the monitor and the top fluoro light it's currently connected up to it so yeah so that's really it and then I'll have a switching power supply added in here and that switching power supply will provide the 5 and 12 volts that will need to come back up to the jammer connector so that some of these wires here which I believe are coming out to these plugs should be the you know the 5 and 12 volts so yeah guys that's the plan I'm going to take off all these cable ties get rid of the excess cabling here and then make sure that we really just come back to player one player two we don't need the audio and uh, then we just need to make sure the power comes through from the switching power supply and then we should be sweet in terms of the cabling for the raspberry jammer so I'm going to get stuck into that now and I'll be back shortly. Right, well we've had a good uh, look at this cabling and got a bit of a win now, so it's all sorted out. Uh, just a couple more things to do, but what I've done so far is
uh, just separated away the uh, coin counter and the uh, coin cables and I need to work out how that's going to be connected because they were all chopped so I'll work that out after we have the main uh, cables for the player one player two buttons um, and controls so that goes up on that snake there we have a isolated the uh, monitor RGB and uh, sync cables and that needs to be connected to the cable that was on the monitor and had been cut so I need to get some shrink wrap I'm out of shrink wrap at the moment I need to solder that up that'll be sorted out then we have the power we've got to plus five volts on the uh, yellow on here and on the white we've got ground on red we have plus 12 and the light green color is a minus five and then the last cable here is the uh, one for the audio and the only other thing that was left is the kick harness which is for the extra buttons which I don't need for this cab as I said I'm only going to use buttons one two and three and that's what the uh, raspberry jammer supports out of the box so we don't need that guy he can stay in here and uh, again if I need to use that later that's all hooked up through there ready to go so guys that's the main cabling all all done um, just a couple of things to tidy up and getting the uh, that uh, RGB set up and the the coin sorted out but really that lion's share if it's done and of course <laughs> excuse the mess but the whole collection of cables that came out that we don't need and uh, probably related to the previous JVS setup or whatever solution was hacked in there previously uh, other than that we have to sort out the mains power supply and um, work out the power for the monitor and just make sure this transformers all good so I'll be back and we'll talk probably about the transformer and the power and just getting all this finalized uh, ready to do our first test so back soon okay guys we are ready to sort out the power and also do all the other cabling that we just mentioned and get all of this soldered up and and done and what i thought i would do is uh spend a bit of time just putting a bit of a rough diagram together to work out how all this uh, power cabling is going to go and i do suggest it's a good idea to, to do this just to make it clear in your mind how it's all going to work out and that way uh, it can be a lot less mistakes and especially when you're dealing with power you want to make sure that you've got things right so what we're going to do if we look at following this diagram that I've roughly strung together first thing we're going to do in step one here is we're going to address this cable the main power cable that's coming into the cab and you can see here that um, I mean even though, even though it's a three prong plug on the other side with an earth it doesn't actually have an earth cable coming through here we've just got uh, neutral and and live here so no ground so we want to change that plug out and uh, put in another cable with a earthing uh, pin in there and that will be our step number one then what we're going to do is we're going to run that earth from uh, the cable here and I've seen some people run it directly to this earthing lug here uh, but on the real Bob Roberts site he's got a really good diagram up there for, for doing power, uh, power wiring and he has it run straight from here up into the filter uh, the AC filter up here and it should be on this lug in the middle here which is the earthing lug there and then he has uh, an earth coming from one of the, the screws here on the back and then down through to the main earthing connector for all the other earths to give it a, a complete connection through so that's what we're going to do that'll be step number two in step number three I will be removing the extra uh, cables that we have here which is for the external plug on the back which allows you to join two cabinets together now that is just a two prong 
plug there and doesn't allow for an earth so I think I'll just remove that I'm not going to be linking uh, two cabinets together anyway so I'll just take that off for safety reasons um, and that will be just a little bit a little bit safer now step number four will come down to the transformer and currently the existing wiring just had a few uh, isolated taps here uh, going into the transformer and then coming out the other side we had literally things just cut off and you know half hooked up like this so we're gonna have to redo all this wiring here we've got the AC power coming in uh, 240 volts coming in on this side and what we're going to do is we're going to tap uh, another set out of that so that we can run that straight off to the switching power supply now switching power supply will support 240 volts and 100 uh, 100 volts as well and originally I was going to put it on the other side of the transformer but that will just provide excess load on the transformer which we can do without so given the fact that it can deal with 240 straight we'll just tap 240 out the front of it straight to the switching power supply and that way the transformer doesn't have to deal with stepping that that down and taking that load as well on the other side of the transformer we are expecting to get 100 volts coming out this side and the first is the marquee so that will go straight up up here to the marquee light and then we will need to have another tap which will go off to the monitor and on the other end of the the uh, the monitor plug we've got two two cables here for ACN and we've got two cables for the degauss circuit which also needs a uh, a switch uh, in between which uh, will allow us to just uh, push it momentarily just a moment momentary switch um, to enable that circuit and allow the decal circuit to work uh, and that'll that'll deal with step number five step six will be connecting up to the marquee light which we already have a connection up there for the 100 uh, volts so there's nothing more we actually need to do there right now step seven is connecting it through into the plug which we just talked about here uh, of this isn't currently wired up at the other end so we have to uh, connect all those up properly so we'll get that connected up and step eight we'll be putting in that momentary switch step nine we'll be running from this molex connector for the rgb and the sink and the uh, and the earth cables and all of those will go back to the jammer harness and currently we have those ready to be soldered up here step 10 we'll bring in a switching power supply and then we will hook up the 12 volts uh, even though we don't need the minus 5 volts we'll, we'll get that connected as well regardless just in case we do need it down the track we have a couple of grounds we need to set up we've got a uh, a plus five volts which we definitely need we've got a field ground which will go back around to the a ground point on the main uh, switch at the back here and then we have the AC lines going into the uh, switching power supply and the last step will be take making sure that we have all our earthing cables reticulated around the chassis and they'll be connected up to all the metal pieces so that they are all connected back to earth uh, back up through to our new earth here and our uh, field out to field ground okay guys so that is the plan for the uh, wiring and all the power so i'm going to get busy now and get all these wires stripped back and soldered up and uh, shrink wrapped and all nicely put away so that it is nice and safe and once i have got all that done then we'll be back to take another look okay the wiring is all now complete and it's not all tidy at the moment i'll get it all tidied up after i've just got uh, everything complete and working and uh, then later on once i put it all back together i'll get it all pinned down nicely and uh, and grouped up further so let's quickly run through what i did all those previous steps we talked about we'll just quickly see what we've actually done here so you can see that we have a uh, new cable coming in here with the Australian 
uh, colours for the earth uh, being the green. We've got the live brown and the uh, neutral, which is blue, so coming in off the plug there. And that is now earthed as well as the filter is now earthed. We have a 3 amp uh, fuse in line with the live side uh, of the AC power of the 240 volts. And just in case uh, we get a short somewhere, then uh, we're liable to, to blow that, or if something starts drawing too much current, it's gonna blow that fuse, of course. And then if we carry on round to the transformer, we now have on the back here, uh, on this side, is where the 240 volts is, is coming in. Uh, and that leads off, that's uh, just a junction section there that will be covered up and that feeds in through to the transformer and that change steps it down from 240 volts down to 100 and the 100 junction is on this side here and then from the 100 it goes up to the marquee which is what we had before so that's the 100 volts up there and the other 100 needed to go off to the monitor uh, cables. So we go to the monitor plug here, and on the end of this plug, if we recall when we were talking about this, we've got uh, AC in, the, the pink and the gray there is the normal AC 100 volts to run the monitor and the other two red ones are the ones for the degauss circuit and on uh, that degauss circuit we follow this this snake back here you'll see that in line we have the uh, the switch um, which you can just uh, press to trigger the degauss circuit on the 240 volt side we have these two cables running off so this is before the transformer and that runs off straight to the switching power supply and then obviously um, you would have seen on the diagram previously where we have wired up the 12 volts uh, minus 5 ground plus 5 field ground and then there's the uh, the AC now with all these connections going out that's the power heads out of that switching power supply on uh, this particular snake here and that goes down to the jammer harness for all the power so they were all hooked up correctly and then from the jammer harness we have the video red blue and green uh, ground and sink so that goes off to the harness that we just looked at before which is the uh, the monitor harness so that all snakes in together because it needs to join up with the AC and uh, have those two AC inputs as well as the red blue green ground and sink from the jammer harness so that's all correctly put in there and the other harnesses we have here one that was completely uh, spliced and I've rejoined up goes through to the coin counter which is uh, down there, and then the coin mech itself, once that uh, plugs back up, and we get the coin mech back in, and uh, that will allow for the registration of coins. And I don't have a, a coin counter, so that'll be just left unplugged. Now, originally I wasn't going to set up the audio, but I thought, well, I may as well, since I'm really wiring everything else up, so. Let's get it all back to standard first, and so then if I want to put some other aftermarket audio in, I can. So I worked out this audio cable, and it was interesting in the end how it was sort of rigged up. But there's four four cables going in here, and you sort of initially think that that may be for uh, the right and left speaker, uh, both positive and negative, because uh, you've got four wires coming down from the speakers. But of course, that's not the case because you've only got mono on jammer, so there's really only just a a positive and negative. Um, so what it turned out to be is that once you look at the jammer pinouts, 
you can uh, find out that two of these cables here, which are the two that aren't connected, is the service and switch buttons actually. So that would normally go to those buttons. We don't really need that because we're going to be using the Jammer Pi anyway, and so uh, Raspberry Jammer. So I can just use software to get to the service uh, and test modes. So they're the only ones that aren't hooked up. Other than that, the two for the plus or minus goes off to the speaker ones, which are then split into the four for the you know both speakers. So it's still mono, even though you've got two two speakers up the top there. Just splits the signal. Now I do believe this is a speaker level, uh, not a line level out. So I'm hoping that the little amplification in the Raspberry Jammer, which we have here is plenty to drive the speakers and, and from what I, I've read about those speakers they're not particularly good anyway so we'll probably end up swapping them out but anyway we'll at least get it initially working as it was intended you can see how it, he how it uh, sounds and if we want to change it out we can and the only other one the other two harnesses here we have the uh, you know the main harness here for all the controls for player one, player two. As we mentioned before, we didn't need the kick harness, so the kick harness is just uh, out here separately. So yeah, this is a nice way to do it um, in terms of grouping all the cables and then cable tying them into sections for their respective responsibilities. And then when I tidy all this up, you know, you can group these together in uh, one big black cable tie. Then if you ever need to you know look at any particular area you can always take those big black ones apart and then all the logical grouping of the the sub wiring harnesses are all available to you and you can find any fault or any change that you want to do so that's all we needed to do now it did take quite a bit of time it's just tedious work uh, really it's not difficult work but you know cutting everything and putting on all the terminal connectors and the shrink wrapping and uh, just following all the wiring through correctly making sure everything is uh, is right it just takes a lot of time so take take your time though because it is important and um, once you uh, get it all set up then it's a matter of uh, starting to do some tests now what I did for the first test when I turned it on and I did do this off camera, um, unfortunately, but I'll let you know how that went and I do have a picture of parts of the results. So the first thing that I did was, I, I wasn't certain on this transformer because it's got 300 watts on here, but it doesn't actually say what rating it is. Uh, if, if it was a 240 volt down to 100 volts, I wasn't sure. So all I did was when I first powered it on, uh, I tested for the switching power supply to get 240 because that's getting 240 volts straight before the transformer anyway so that should have just come straight on without any problem and it did so there was no issue there i then uh, put a multimeter on the plus five and ground and the plus 12 and the minus five just to check all those the plus five is the main one that you want to check um, which has the variable knob which you can change to make sure that it's on five volts so you want to do that before you plug anything else in and it will generally read a little bit higher when it's not under load when nothing's plugged in and you shouldn't run these very long when there's nothing plugged in either um, so i did this relatively quickly and got the plus five volts you know just a little bit higher while it was um, not under load knowing that it would drop so that was the test I did there and then for the transformer to try and just work out the 100 volt the easiest way was to just unplug the marquee light and then with the plug there I could put the uh, multimeter in um, inside the plug there and then turn it on and then check the voltage. Now the voltage was up at 116 so it's definitely higher than 100 but of course it's not under load and the fact that this machine has been in operation the way that it was wired up when I got it uh, showed that it was actually configured this way and was probably operating this way with an Australian plug and so forth so we felt relatively confident that um, you know that it had been already plugged in, in in this way and the the power that was coming out of that was driving the components anyway now that could you know cause some faults on the components over time who knows 
but uh, we thought that it would be okay to go ahead and then test the uh, <coughs> marquee and the monitor. So that's what I did. And I got the, the marquee first plugged in and going and that was all sweet. So that was good news. And it was good that even the light bulb worked actually, so I didn't have to change that or the starter in it. So that was fantastic. And then after that was the time for the monitor and I also understand that you shouldn't really drive the monitor without having uh, some source uh, driving it. So I got the, uh, the Jammer Pi or the Raspberry Pi, <laughs> Raspberry Pi uh, connected up and had that running, fired it up and I could see coming up on the screen with the monitor monitor fired up got a picture but it was just this square um, block with not much going on it did then change as the uh, as the machine as the jammer pipe booted up into its different screens it was all out of sync it didn't look good I tried to adjust it out with the pots and was not getting anywhere fast and um, really was at a loss and and felt that you know the chassis just needs a, a really good service and I wasn't really expecting the chassis to, to work just given the state of the machines I you know I, I really had a very low confidence rating that it would just work out of the box so I was sort of expecting to go uh, take it to Joe Max take it to Joey to get it sorted out anyway uh, but what I did do is just before I did that I thought oh, I'll test the degal circuit while I'm here um, and I pressed the decal circuit and it went bang um, in terms of the monitor flyback. There was a big flash at the back and then the monitor went dead and there was no picture at all. So that'll be just the chassis, the tube will be fine, um, but something on the uh, chassis wasn't right. And initially I thought it might have been something to do with the voltage that were being higher, uh, but I did have a, a bit of a chat to, to Joey via email and he assured me that some of these transformers can be right up to like 125 volts and they work perfectly fine and generally drop down quite a bit under load anyway and that sort of tolerance is well well accepted. So he didn't suspect that, he did feel that probably the issue that I was having originally got worse when the d circuit went, went on and the B plus went low and that could have uh, just made things worse and then cause things to blow so obviously he hasn't had checked it out yet so that's just this rough guess from what I've told him uh, so I need to take the chassis out of the monitor now and get that off to Joey and uh, and get that fixed up and then once we get that back we should have a complete working cabinet well that is it we've come to the end of another video and thank goodness all that wiring is now behind us and hopefully it's a little bit easier now, a little road ahead to get the uh, the cabinet back together again, which would be just a reverse of, of the way we took it apart. Check out the other video if you want to see how that was done. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll start putting everything back in, all the, the doors and the subframes and so forth need to go back in, all the wiring needs to be snaked and cable tied up a little bit further and a few other isolation boxes need to be added. So. I'll go ahead and do all that and get it all tidied up and uh, we have to send the chassis away to Joe Mac, to Joey and um, it's an MS829 uh, FSG is the chassis that's in there and he will go through it, work his magic hopefully and we'll get that uh, chassis back. Uh, I think within the, within the week he's normally pretty quick at the turnaround and once I get that back I'll get the uh, get the monitor back in uh, and then we shall do sort out the control panel because that's the last thing that needs to be sorted out and then we'll do a, a final test and that'll be just a matter of setting up the software for the vertical shmups and we should be all sweet. So uh, if you want to see that, please again uh, subscribe and uh, like this video if you like it, tell your friends and all that good stuff. And I uh, hope to see you on the next, uh, the next video, whatever video that may be in between. Uh, but until then, take care and ciao for now.